Good morning, everybody. Paul here, coming at you with what I am going to call the news peruse, because we peruse the news directly after I snooze. Well, maybe not directly, but close. Simultaneous sip, everyone. Happy Saturday. <sighs> Starting out the day right with coffee and internet friends. All right, <clears throat> let's do this. So, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I recorded one of these uh, just a few minutes ago without any kind of um, tabs open and any kind of scaffolding and it ended up being like 20 minutes of half of it just me with uh, saying unnecessary information and rambling for part of it so I'm gonna give you guys a more um, off-the-cuff version that has a little bit of preparation uh, just because it, it just it's, there's a lot going on and sometimes I find information and just go off on a tangent and there's just so much data out there that I've realized it's better for me and it's better for you guys so that I respect your time and keep things on track and in line so you get the relevant information that we're seeing coming out this morning without giving too much information about a bunch of stuff that's happened before because I love the news I really do there's always so much going on here but first things first let's go ahead and get started so you can see some of the ones I've selected I picked the Walmart and MoneyGram partnership that could pump Ripple. One thing I wanted to point out that I found really interesting is the terminology could pump. Whenever you see positive terminology like that, tendentially, you over here on the left hand side see a reflection in the um, correlation of indicators. So green up arrows, that means bullish sentiment. Uh, down red arrow over here, that's bearish sentiment. Thumbs up just means somebody likes it. Thumbs down means somebody doesn't like it. So the thumbs are personal preference. The arrows are actual sentiment indicators. And because language like could pump is being used here, you see a bigger ratio of green arrows compared to red arrows. Now, I've seen partnerships here on Crypto Panic that involve Ripple specifically, just because Ripple kind of gets a bad rap. There seems to be a lot of detractors and a lot of diehards, not a lot of in-between. Well, if it just has a Ripple's having a partnership, there's generally a more balanced down arrow to up arrow ratio. So that's just an interesting thing to keep an eye on. You know, even if somebody just peruses like we're doing here and looks at the title, that could affect their subconscious sentiment. So try to keep a critical mind as to what you read. Just my two cents, not financial advice. I'm just a guy on the internet. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a lawyer. All of this is just my opinion. Anyway, let's go ahead and look more at the uh, Walmart partnership here. Uh, they'll be working with MoneyGram. Now, I hadn't heard of MoneyGram until now. They have 347,000 agent offices worldwide with an estimate $1.6 billion and reported growth of 25% year over year. So they're a big up and coming company from the looks of things, especially catching the eye of the multinational state corporatist giant Walmart. And of course, they're going to be using Ripple's X Rapid system for payment settlement. Um, what is it? Well, I can answer that. XRapid is their payment settlement system, and it's fantastic. If you've ever done a wire transfer, you know that it's a nightmare. It takes between a day and a half to four days, and they're going to take a huge chunk of your money. XRapid cuts all of that out, and it's, it's built to scale. Uh, we, they recently had a partnership between the Central Bank of Korea and the Central Bank of Japan, and it was a huge success. Ripple also self-reports that they're working with over 40 central banks worldwide, and just recently they were able to partner with 61 individual Japanese banks. So they're making huge moves. Now, this does kind of come at a price. Ripple is pretty centralized. You can tell by the crypto detective. This dude says that only 10% of Ripple is held by the masses, and he has some really sexy data to back it up. Dude did the leg work like look at all this this is this is high quality stuff dude really did a great job shout out to where's your name bud Adam Quinn Adam Quinn did some great work there specifically he pointed out a guy named Jed McCaleb now Jed McCaleb had a little bit of obfuscation from what's in what account uh, that may be just you know intentional or otherwise maybe he just moved some stuff around but man did Adam Quinn do some digging to find what's related to what so great legwork there and it demonstrates that about 90% of total supply is owned by Ripple or Ripple affiliates you can see here that Adam Quinn came out and said eh, well I firmly believe it's at least 20% of the supply that's in public hands so only 80% is, is centralized but that's still a huge amount now, you see, Ripple was able to have a lot of success so far. I mean, they've partnered with a lot of various banks. You see here, 61 Japanese banks. This is an article from March 10th, and so they're, they're doing work. Existing corporations tendentially don't want to partner with 
new cutting edge financial technology that isn't a company but rather a decentralized infrastructure they, they want to have something more concrete that can navigate the global international contract system so having a quasi centralized or outright centralized company like ripple use this cutting edge financial technology allows for uh, the field to kind of be played as is, if that makes sense. This technology is shifting the world in a positive decentralized way, but as things stand now, you're going to have to connect it to existing corporations, and Ripple seems to largely serve that caveat for better or for worse. Again, none of this is financial advice, but one thing I do want to mention is when it comes to diversifying your portfolio, in my opinion, my personal opinion, there's nothing wrong with a bit of diversity. Holding some centralized, some decentralized uh, coins, various kind of uh, consensus algorithms and protocols and various use cases allows for a more resilient diversified portfolio even though the crypto markets generally move in unison you never know what's going to win out in the long term so having that diversity and that exposure can be beneficial then again, if you have a speciality that you're very skilled at and you have knowledge about that particular field, maybe you wanna weight your portfolio more heavily in a particular way because you have more insight about a particular use value. I have no idea. These are all just hypotheticals and my opinion. Again, non-financial advice, just some interesting thoughts. All right, what else we got going on today here on the crypto panic, which helps you not panic. All right, 400 million, I almost said pounds, uh, 400 million euro. Uh, allegedly frozen in a Polish bank. Now, if you haven't seen my Tether videos, go check them out. Um, in my opinion, they're pretty pretty well done. The uh, Twitter user Bitfinex with an ED on the end of this, he's done just absolutely brilliant work. I'll put a link below in the description to his Twitter. Just brilliant work about Bitfinex and how it's not all it's cracked up to be. So let's set a little scaffolding as to why 400 million euro has been frozen. Bitfinex is owned and controlled by the same people who own and control Tether. Why is that a problem? Well, Tether isn't backed by anything. See, in public and in private, Bitfinex has claimed, you know, we're, we don't own Tether, we're loosely associated with them. Yes, we have a partnership, but the same people don't own them. They're two different entities. And the Paradise Papers, which was the biggest data breach in human history that divulged tons of offshore accounts and weird international tax evasion sort of things going on. Uh, that's a huge thing you can do in international tax law. It, it's a mess point of the matter being information was gleaned that in fact Bitfinex and Tether are owned and controlled by the exact same people study came out showing a minor correlation between Tether printings and the effect of Bitcoin's price next thing you know the SEC summoned Bitfinex to head on in to court to answer some questions now they've created tons of bank accounts I'm talking in Denmark uh, I think I believe in um, Malta they did Gibraltar as well. I think they had a Spanish one. Uh, Wells Fargo broke ties with them uh, over that sort of thing. They had a bank in Taiwan. Basically, they had hands in everything, which is just kind of shady in my personal opinion. And things don't really illuminate any better here. It looks to just get more shady. You can see here that crypto SP Zoo, which in Polish means limited liability. Uh, you see here. Essentially, they had a connection, or their parent company, Crypto Capital Corporation, had a connection to a Colombian drug cartel. That's not very good. And all of this started when the Belgian Ministry of Foreign Affairs was apparently ripped off of 400,000 euro by building the Belgian embassy in the DRC. Just, I actually had to chuckle at this, considering that the uh, uh, the Belgian Empire imperialized the Democratic Republic of Congo. So I just imagine some politicians in the DRC like, oh yeah, yeah, you can build that embassy. Yeah, yeah, it's going to cost you how much? No, we're going to write off. Yeah, we're going to up that a little bit. Uh, so just a little humor there. Um, but yeah, so essentially what happened is um, private employees are reporting that some interesting things are happening. The, the media is reporting we already know they've created a much larger chain of related companies, like I just mentioned. The scale of their financial operations indicates these bills were to hide money from smuggling cocaine to Europe. The companies were also used for large-scale scams. Criminals have hidden their operations, also exchanging money from cryptocurrencies, obliterating traces, etc., etc. Now, this is really interesting that Poland comes out with this, considering that just not too long ago, the government of Poland... Poland was caught with their pants down, metaphorically, paying for anti-crypto YouTube videos. It was a really hilarious video, and uh, people, they did, the, they did the legwork and found out that the money to pay for the video came from the Polish government, trying to warn people about the dangers of cryptocurrency. So, the fact that the Polish media is reporting about this as a huge money laundering issue in light of cryptocurrency, rather than just a corporate, uh, corporate entity being absolutely ridiculous and immoral, 
eh, you know, it, you get what you get. But point of the matter being, I'm skeptical of Poland. Uh, not, not as a country as a whole, but when it comes to reporting on crypto, I take it with a grain of salt because of those paid YouTube videos. So, I believe that's all the time we have for today. Let me take a look. All right, do we have time for one more? I think we have time for one more. Here we go. A man who needs to turn that frown upside down because George Soros is buying cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Now he put out sentiment a while back that said, ah, Bitcoin, it's a, it's a scam. These are all charlatans. I'm not investing. This is ridiculous. And the thing about smart money, the, just the thing about smart money is when you have all this money, you can't just jump into something because you're going to be a market mover generally you want to put out a uh, sentiment that's actually nearly the opposite of the position you're going to take and that sounds kind of sketchy or, or weird or immoral but really it's just a person saying stuff so realistically the gravity of their statement should be taken with a grain of salt after all the dude's got some hardware upstairs to have made it this far regardless of destabilizing countries or or positive sentiments or however you feel about them the dude's got some hardware the dude's a smart dude so point of the matter being the article goes on to talk about you know 20 percent appreciations or depreciations are very common here in crypto uh, it's, it's pretty interesting considering soros is a, a bit older of a gentleman in his 90s so this is going to be really interesting to see how he handles these otherwise volatile markets however living through nazi germany um and just the the wild swings of post world war ii onward in the markets the the 19 1970s 1980s 90s crashes and booms and busts is, he may be a bit more uh, a bit more of a hardened gentleman than some other traders so point of the matter being it's interesting he's jumping in now considering it's Bitcoin, it being Bitcoin. Bitcoin's lost over 65% of its value since all-time high. So just given the fact that it's collapsed so much in price and has adjusted so much, it kind of makes sense for smart money to be slowly moving in. So like I said, Soros, you should turn that frown upside down, dude. I mean, who knows? Cryptos are the future. And you're setting yourself up to be pretty comfortable in your... I, I, do you even call this a golden age anymore? I mean, dude's a 90-something. When did golden years end? When did golden years become platinum years? All right. Anyway, that's all the time we have for today, folks, I believe. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground here. Good stuff. Let me know what you think of this sort of content. Is doing just an overview of the news helpful to you guys? Is it something that's just disinteresting? Am, am I becoming the new Fox News CNN? Should should I go ahead and just like should I get a crop top or something? Would that would that get some would that get you guys interested? I don't know. Let me know what you think below in the comments. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Relax, do what you enjoy, get whatever work you have to get done. Done, kick back, have a good time. Much love guys. Stay safe. My name is Paul. Talk to you next time.